Did you ever doubt with your own editing skills and thought to yourself, I should have listened to my parents and just become a postman? You feel like quitting because you don't make any progress. Well, that is something we all have in common. Am I really good enough? Luckily, there's a simple way to test this, a tool to measure if you're noob or pro or, or somewhere in between. So find out what skill level that you are and learn what the next steps will be for your editing journey. Double win. Let's start with the five noob tips or, or beginner tips. Nothing is more frustrating than a project where nothing is sorted. And that's why I color label my clips, creating a structure in my entire edit for for example, my talking head clips will have a blue color, while my b-roll will be orange, the text animations will be yellow, and so on. You will be editing faster than a Sheeta on steroids. And the next tip will also help with that. If you want to add a certain effect to your clip, you normally look for it in the effects library and then drag that. Well, stop doing that. Save time by just double clicking on the effect while your clip is selected. Boom, effect added. Now, not every audio clip has the same volume level. Even right now, my audio can change a lot. When I look away, the mic doesn't pick up the audio that well. But with the audio gain function, you can easily mix your audio to be the same volume. Just choose normalize speak to and gain the audio. For the next tip, let's get complete control over the position, scale, and rotation of a clip. Even as a beginner, you should know that you can use the motion properties for this. But if you are working on two monitors, this can glitch. That's why I usually adjust my clip by selecting the motion property and moving it around in the program panel, visually. Now, another workaround for that weird glitch is if you would hold down shift while changing any property. This will move your clips faster and you don't have to drag your mouse so far. And if you need those super precise size adjustments, just hold down your control key instead of shift for a much slower adjustment. And with that in mind, you can create some really cool animations. However, when looking at this, you know it's bad. It's missing a couple of crucial elements. First of all, the keyframes itself are linear. This means that the animation starts and stops super hard. For the starting keyframe, you want to set it to ease out as we're going out of the keyframe. For the last one, set it to ease in as we're going into the keyframe. This makes your animation start and stop smoothly. But that still doesn't make it realistic. In fact, you actually want to use the transform effect. It has all the same properties as the normal motion settings, plus something extra, the shutter angle. Setting this to 180 degree gives us natural motion blur. Now, be honest, guys, did you know all five tips? If that is true, you've passed the noob section. You're no beginner anymore, which means that we can go over to the next level. Slow motion is awesome for b-roll edits. It can add so much more emotion, but not all clips have a higher frame rate, which is needed for slow motion. And if you would slow down a normal clip, it would look choppy, pretty bad. However, Premiere has a tool to help you fake that slow motion by enabling optical flow. It will generate the missing frames, making your fake slow-mo much smoother. And all that talk about stretching clips brings me to our next tip. You've probably used markers in your timeline before, while well, they're really useful to add notes. But sometimes I want to highlight a longer part. Well, if you hold down Alt, I can drag out that marker. It can now span over a larger part of the timeline. And you can even add some text in your marker to be even more organized. Now, let me give you a bonus tip. Whether it's short form live stream, product videos, or travel vlogs, video Video consumption is still on the rise, and if you want to create effective scroll-stopping videos at scale but don't know where to start, well, the beginner's guide to creating video from Storyblocks is for you, and big thanks to them for also sponsoring this video. Their in-house team of experts have created a free course together with a lineup of professional video creators like YC Imaging, Shannon Beveridge, and myself will teach you the fundamental steps to creating high-quality video and getting it into the world fast. No technical experience is needed. Now, from concept to this distribution, each step is broken down into short, focused episodes with key tips where you can jump right into what you want to learn. Or you can just binge watch all of them in an hour. Storyblocks will publish this course on their YouTube channel next Monday, so if it isn't Monday yet, just go and subscribe to their channel, link is in the description down below. And if it is already beyond the 5th of December, well, well what are you waiting for? Just go and check out the course, guys. And after you've learned so many new insights, you can test them all out by using their huge library of over a million 4K and HD 
footage, music, sound effects, images, and more. And believe me, guys, this is amazing. You can't imagine how many stock assets that we download per project for VFX or video edits, especially the pre-made professional templates for Premiere and After Effects. We use them to speed up our workflow, giving us more time to create awesome videos for you guys. Now get started with Storyblocks and take back creative control by clicking the first link in the description down below or just go straight to storyblocks.com forward slash Cinecom. Now recently we started uploading our old videos to TikTok and Instagram, but these need to be snappy, fast-paced, and no longer than a minute. This means that we have to re-edit them. However, we lost a lot of projects and a file transfer failure. Luckily, we still have everything on YouTube though. So we downloaded our own videos and brought them into Premiere. And here's where the magic happens. With my video in a sequence, I right-click on it and choose Scene Edit Detection. Premiere's AI will now analyze it and create cuts on all the original cut points really amazing and something else that is truly amazing is sound design it enhances everything you see it's such a powerful tool but also very destructive if you use it wrong every sound has a different tone if it's recorded in different locations from the essential sound panel we can add reverb to these sounds to match them more closely together but this introduces a new problem when a sound ends the reverb also stops which is unnatural now to fix that instead of cutting off your sound clip just keyframe the volume this makes your audio stop, but the reverb will just continue. Now the next tip is again about order and organization. We already know we can use color labels and markers, but what if you have so many layers with footage and audio that it gets very messy and confusing in your timeline, and eventually you will get very frustrated, which doesn't really help with your edit. Now what I would do is create an empty track layer between, for example, your footage with speech and b-roll, then just log that track and minimize it, leaving you with a small separation and a better overview of the timeline. And with that last tip, you've just completed the intermediate level or the okay level. Did you get a 10 out of 10 score? Let me know in the comments down below, guys. And now comes the five tips for the pros. Starting with organization at a whole new level. If you're editing every week just like us, you often use the same assets over and over again. So you need a template of some sorts. Well, you can create a production, which is actually just a project where you can organize multiple different projects within. This will streamline your workflow and keep all of your assets in one place. But it also makes team collaboration possible. We use productions all the time and it has helped us to organize and all, but also work better to together as a team. By the way, if you want to learn all the details about productions, we have an in-depth course which also teaches you about editing off a network server. Again, link in the description down below. But keep in mind, this is beyond the pro level. You know, it's super frustrating. If you create something in After Effects and then import that into Premiere, you get a dynamic link. Awesome feature, right? Well, it's slower as watching paint dry. And oftentimes it introduces crashes while rendering, which sucks. However, teach your Jordy to the rescue. Just render your After Effects creation and place that right inside Premiere. I know, you didn't saw that coming. <laughs> Now, I know it doesn't blow your mind, but this will. If you want to make some adjustments to that After Effects render, you just right-click on it and choose Edit Original, and that will open up the After Effects project, and you can easily make your adjustments. And I bet you didn't knew that one. Oh man, your editing is going to be so fast. You're already like, like here somewhere. But it can go even faster with our next tip. When you have a big project, you probably also have lots of audio clips. And to adjust them separately will take too much time. You know, copying and pasting audio properties or effects would be a beginner move. Well, we are at the pro level right now, so we're going to use the audio track mixer. And this will let you add effects and adjustments over the entire track. So let's see that we have some audio of me talking in the studio and, and then outside. Now they both need different processing, so separate them between two tracks. Now with the audio track mixer, we can then easily adjust them track by track. Now the track mixer has tons of more advantages such as the use of VST plugins. These are plugins that simulate studio hardware. You can find them all over the internet. Some are paid, some are free. A few good ones are Valhalla Supermassive and TDR Nova. All right, the next tip isn't one that I use much, but the team here does. As we all work close together, they often need feedback from each other with a clear battle plan to avoid duplication of work. So we make use of custom 
custom metadata. With this option, we can add an extra text box or a check box to anything in the project window, leaving us with the possibility to add feedback notes on certain BFX shots, but also mark them being finished. This way, everybody knows exactly what needs to be done. All right, what's the last thing you would do in an edit class? You, Jeff. No, not importing your footage. You want to export your video. Jeff, get out. Now, class, I know it sounds weird and everything, but when you render with Premiere Pro, your video will look different from your edit. The colors are flatter and just not the same. And this is because Premiere will render with a small gamma shift, which is actually quite annoying if you spent your time with color grading and everything. However, don't worry. Teacher Jordy again to the rescue. We can fix that. Just go over to the Preferences and under the General tab, enable the Display Color Management option. Then download Adobe's Gamma Compensation LUT and add that to your export panel. And voila! We fixed it. Now, I'm super curious to what your score is, guys, because we've gone through everything right now. Did you make it all the way through the pro level? If not, don't worry. Just watch the video here on the left to learn about the next steps in your video editing journey. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Storyblocks, for your support. And as always, stay creative.